Welcome to the uh, program of the Community Awareness Series of the Jersey City Free Public Library. Uh, Happy New Year to you. I hope everyone is doing uh, well. I hope you had a nice transition into 2021, and I hope you and your family and your loved ones are safe and healthy. Uh, to start the year off, uh, we want to welcome you uh, to the Taiko Masala Drum Dojo. They were very kind to invite us out here into Brooklyn uh, so we could take a look at their uh, class, the students uh, going over and practicing different uh, patterns, rhythms, and uh, it's really, really interesting stuff. So uh, we want to welcome you and uh, we're going to go inside and we're going to take a look and see what's going on with the Taiko Masala Drumming Group. Thank you for joining us. Taiko Masala Dojo. We'd like to introduce members. <laughs> the first piece we're going to play is called Dai Kagura. Enjoy.
Okay, next piece is called Hiryu Sandangaishi. This is the traditional Japanese taiko drumming music. It uh, has uh, about 300 years history.
So the third piece we play is called Tonbane Daigo, which means jumping taiko. Okay, next piece is called Miyake Taiko, which is also traditional piece. Ha!
next piece is called Mirai Taiko, translated to English, Future Taiko. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, this is gonna be our last piece called Tatoe Bayashi.
So we are here in Brooklyn at the uh, Taiko Masala Drumming Dojo. They've been very kind to invite us at the Community Awareness Series out to hang out and listen to them perform. Um, before we do get into the performance, I'd like to briefly get into a little bit about the history of uh, Taiko Masala Drumming, uh, the background of this space, which is a wonderful space they have here, and uh, the passion of the wonderful students that they have here. So this is uh, Yumi, Akiko, and Laura. Happy New Year! Thank you so much. Akemashite, omenetou gozaimasu. We are Taiko uh, Masala Dojo. We are very honored to be invited to perform for the uh, Community um, Awareness Series. And um, so I'm going to briefly talk about well, history of Taiko, um, just only in Japan, because Taiko is not only instruments for, for Japan. Actually, you can find all kinds of drums all over the world. But just focusing on Japan, um, the, those instruments came from uh, those Asian in, um, I know, <laughs> continent um, through uh, Buddhism, actually. So around the 6th century, m many monks and musicians, or even those carpenters, many artists came from China through the uh, Korean Peninsula. And that's when they brought these instruments. And I heard that uh, the style of the taiko drums used to be just about the same style. But back then, it was used more sort of like a ritual music and uh, <laughs> festivals, such as rice field or like a little sh uh, Shinto shrines events and so and so. But uh, little by little over the time, it was kind of refined to be more like a performance events for the noble and emperor, those <laughs> um, well, higher class people. And during the uh, Sengoku era, well, you might say end of 14th century, 15th centuries, well, taiko drums were used for like soldiers marching. And this was used sort of like um, keep their you know, energies up and are also going to the war zone. So they really have to unite them. And this was used for not only the uh, <coughs> soldiers sake, but also cheering up the each other because the battle zone was very sacred back then. And then um, after the Sengoku era, the Tokugawa Ieyasu, the shogunate, he sort of like united the country. So there was no more zone, uh, no more war zone. <laughs> Excuse me. There was no more war time. So the people will start having more peaceful time. So that's when they start using taiko, more sort of like ritual or musical pieces. And then they start enjoying uh, exchanging cultural throughout those regions because daimyo traveling from Edo to each regions. So that's when they really exchange many music and culture. And then uh, the World War II ended. That's when the, um, the um, occupation time, they tried to sort of banish Japanese traditional culture and then including those music. So that's when the jazz music came into, <laughs> and even the musical. <laughs> so a lot of the people kind of forgotten about those traditional music. And then, in fact, um, our grandmaster, Oguchi Daihachi Sensei, uh, in the Okaya region, he was a jam drummer, jazz drum musician uh, originally. But he found, or his family actually, he found a piece of a very old um, music sheet from this uh, war time, single time. And then that's when he started creating an orchestra style taiko, which we still call them Osua Daiko. And that was the very revolutional uh, thing for the uh, taiko history in Japan. And many, many people start using taiko drum as an instrument to like orchestra type of music. So there's no tone, but you can really enjoy the music piece because there's so many different uh, sounds on even a hue flute and dance piece and so on so. Uh, as you saw, there are also a lot of uh, uh, chimes and all kind of uh, uh, instruments to make a lot of a noise. Noise, or I shouldn't say joyful noise. <laughs> and anyway, so um, around the 1960s or so, people start forming a group of taiko performance team. And then, well, the most famous one was called Onde Koza in Sado Island. And then they came to the U.S. and they actually performed at the 
Beacon Theater or even the Boston Marathon. And that's when American media start focusing on how cool they are. And they're more sort of like a muscle musicians. <laughs> and they have a very, very different style. So people are fascinated about this style. And then this kind of a fever and an, uh, not the, uh, performance style spread the world. So now uh, it's c coming from originally from many Asian countries, but it came to Japan, but also came to the U.S. And then people start learning all kind of uh, a orchestra style. Taiko now in the U.S. and then all over the world. <laughs> we are very happy to learn this Osua Daiko style pieces from our sensei, Kurashima Hiro sensei, because he was actually one of the apprentice, um, directly apprentice from this Osua Daiko uh, Grandmaster Oguchi Daihatsu Sensei. So we are very happy to maintain this tradition. So I try to keep it simple, but this is the, <laughs> this is the history of Taiko. Thank you. Thank you, Akiko. Well, I am Laura, and I've been uh, honored as an Irish girl to play Taiko in Brooklyn for about uh, eight years. And uh, I began to love taiko just by going to Mitsua Marketplace, which always has a festival. Uh, the summer times, uh, be, there's a lot of celebration and a lot of Oban festival. And I would go there every year and hear taiko masala. And uh, I was just so moved by the music. And I went for several years and then uh, the marketplace arranged, I guess, with, uh, with Sensei uh, to give lessons for anyone who would be willing to play Taiko. So I signed up right away. I got my bachi the first day. <laughs> and we started learning Isamigoma, which is one of, uh, one of the basic, basic pieces that uh, Grandmaster Daihachi Oguchi uh, uh, composed and many, many people uh, when they begin to learn Taiko will learn Isamigo Ma. So I just, I fell in love and I stayed. There's something very special about Taiko. I had performed before, but this is something very different, very rooted. I think uh, Akiko gave much of the history of how <laughs> Grandmaster, no, I'm just saying how Grandmaster Daihachi Oguchi took this this form and brought it so an Irish girl from Missouri <laughs> can play taiko. <laughs> uh, because I, I think when he saw this music, he was really moved. Though he had drummed, he had experienced there was something very spiritual uh, uh, experience coming from playing the taiko. And uh, I think, and Yumi will probably talk more about it, it was he, he felt that we all, first of all, we all uh, are attuned to the drums just from being in the womb. I think it's one of his favorite sayings that we hear the beat of our mother's heart. So he had a very deep sense of what that drumming means to us and, uh, and that we all have something to express and him wanting to bring this to the people and give more and more people an opportunity to play has just, I feel I've been really blessed by it. Um, so uh, I think Yumi was going to talk about the passion. That's what yeah. we're talking about yes. with the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, with, uh, see, we, we can stop talking about that <laughs> as we start. So um, I'll make it short, but um, so even the um, Akiko gave a history, but uh, even in, in current life, the taiko is really ingrained in our lives. If I go back to Japan during summer, there are a lot of festivals and uh, I hear taiko everywhere if I go to a festival. Even winter, there are specific, fest uh, there are specific festivals. Um, some regions, they play taiko for funerals, so it's really in our lives. And, um, the the other way that the uh, taiko became very prevailed in the U.S. is uh, the immigrant Japanese immigrant uh, really uh, wanted to preserve some tradition. So the uh, first generation, second generation, they uh, wanted to 
uh, practice something that they learned in Japan, and then um, they started practicing Taiko. So we now have like uh, the Taiko Conference, East Coast Taiko Conference, West Coast Taiko Conference. This year we had a World Taiko Conference. So it becoming very universal. And then even in this dojo, we have uh, a lot of students with a lot of different backgrounds, uh, occupation-wise, but also um, from different countries, so it's really international. But at the same time, for me, this is um, a way to be connected with Japanese tradition. And this is the only time that I can speak in Japanese, so that's uh, <laughs> something that I really enjoy. Uh, and then, um, and then, uh, what was I thinking? Uh, um, yeah, feel, feeling really just connected with uh, Japanese tradition, so that's, uh, very important for me, especially this year. Uh, I usually try to go back to Japan once a year, uh, but because of the pandemic, I couldn't do that. And a lot of people are just stuck at home. And uh, so it was very important, particularly this year, uh, to come here and then play Taiko and then have that the connection to my um, home country. So. I think that's really an important thing that you said. You mentioned international. That's you know the power of music. It doesn't matter your background, where you come from. You come from all walks of life, and it just has the power to you know connect us all together. It's a universal language, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and you mentioned jazz, so that's <laughs> very important. <laughs> right. uh, so thank you, guys. Really, this is a beautiful moment. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So first piece we're gonna perform is called Sua Ikazuchi. This is war drumming song.
Next piece is called G Train. This is our original song. <laughs>
Okay, this will be our last song for today. Uh, the title is Silver Blood. <laughs>